So, I'm scaling a load of objects relative to the 3D cursor, and one of these objects is a camera. So what's happening in the camera view? Absolutely nothing. Say that again. Is this because the camera is scaling as well? Not really, no. So here I'm scaling the camera, on its origin, and absolutely nothing is happening to the view. What's happening is the spaces between the objects is scaling equally as well as the object scaling. This is also true if you move or rotate a load of objects including the camera. But, well, look, I'm rotating now, and though I'm rotating all the objects, I'm not rotating the sky, which is an HDRI, which is in the world settings, and that doesn't rotate with all the objects. That You'd have to go into, like, the world's texture settings to do all that. OK, so, before we go any further, here's some exceptions to the rule. EXCEPTION 1! We do have to scale in all dimensions equally. If we start scaling through, say, just the z-axis, not great. EXCEPTION 2! This one's more complicated and relates to depth of field. OK, so, this cross here is the focal point. As I scale everything, well, it's kind of staying the same distance from the camera, even though everything else is scaling. No problem, I'll set this handy Suzanne head to be the focal point, like this. Yeah, but, and this won't make much of a difference unless you scale it by, like, massive orders of magnitude. So, let's say we set the camera's aperture to 5.6, then the aperture is open by 8.9 millimetres. This is a lot more significant if you're looking at pencil sharpeners than if you're looking at planets. This is why you can make people look like tiny, tiny model people by making the depth of field really shallow. OK, so that's the rules of the trick. Now, how do we use it? Well, that, my friend, is a story for another day. Special kudos to anyone who can explain the musical joke in the future.